Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about some examples of least squares function approximation uh, problems. This is a second video in a pair of videos. One In the first video, we introduced the concept of least squares function approximation and derived the formula. So let me just write down that formula. Of course, we're going to be given an f of x, and there'll be some domain a to b, some uh, interval, okay? And we have an inner product on that interval defined by f of x times g of x dx, okay? Uh, and then we have an approximation, which is going to be f hat is equal to the sum ci phi i, i equals 1 all the way to n, uh, and it's going to be approximately it'll be as close as we can get it to f in the sense that the squared magnitude f comma f hat is is minimal okay and one of the facts that we're going to uh, or one of the and the procedure is in the algorithm You can call it an algorithm because it can be done sequentially. Is that the ci can be computed in sequence by taking the inner product of f with each function and dividing it by the inner product of that of those functions with themselves. The one thing, though, of course, is that the phi i are orthogonal. Well, they have to have a set of orthogonal functions. So phi i comma phi j have to be equal zero when i is not equal to j. Okay, so that's the procedure we're going to do. What we're going to do is just do two examples. Um, the first example, and I'll just go to a new page now, is we're going to have the function. So this is example. Um, let me just write that up. Our example one will be the following. We're going to have f of x is going to be equal to 1 minus x. Okay, so this is a line. All right, and our functions, our orthogonal functions, are going to be these Haar wavelets. And we're just going to take the first two Haar wavelets. And so in a uh, in previous videos or lectures, you probably saw these, uh, were, they were introduced to you, but let's just write down what the first two are. So phi zero of x is just equal to one, okay? Okay, um, it's a line. I should also mention we have to have a domain here. I'm sorry, guys, I forgot that. It's gonna be zero to one, okay? That's our domain. And then phi one, our second Haar, Haar wavelet, it's going to be a piecewise function defined as 1 for x less than or equal to 1 half. And it's equal to negative 1 for x is greater than or equal to, uh, oops, not greater than, greater than 1 half. Okay, we could also maybe, uh, maybe, maybe it's best to, uh, um, write the full interval out there. Let me just do that really quick. X is going to uh, range from below one half all the way up to one there. Okay, so the graphs of these functions are pretty straightforward. To write down the first function is that's phi zero and it's just equal to one. And the second function goes all the way to one half it goes down. Let me just get this. Sorry, this graph isn't the best artistic job I've ever done. Uh, that's going to be phi 1. The second Haar wavelet there is going to be a step function. Okay, And we can check you know, that these are, in fact, orthogonal. Uh, uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 times phi 1 dx, right there, that 1, that's just phi 0. 
we can write that as actually 0 to 1 half. That's going to be 1 times 1, right? dx minus or plus, I should say, integral from 1 half to 1 of 1 times negative 1 dx. Clearly, those are going to cancel, and you're going to get 0, just like you, uh, like we thought. Okay, so let's just actually go ahead and compute the values here. Um, I might skip some of the steps. You can check them on Wolfram Alpha or any computer algebra system. It's just some fairly basic calculus. Um, but all we have to do is compute uh, a C0. We'll start there. Start our index at 0. And that's going to be the, the inner product of F with phi 0 all over phi 0 comma phi 0. And that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of f times 1 dx all over, uh, let's just write this, integral from 0 to 1 of 1 dx. I think we know the denominator is going to be 1. And the numerator is going to be the integral of 1 minus x dx. Uh, we could probably get this one uh, if, you, if you look at the graph of that function. It's just a function that looks like this, like that. And the area under that curve is just going to be 1 half. It's just the base times height formula times 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half. OK, so we've got our first coefficient. Second coefficient, then, is going to be uh, c1. And that's going to be f comma phi1 all over uh, phi1 comma phi1. This one's going to be maybe a little bit more tricky. I'll spare you some of the steps and just say that um, uh, uh, you're going to get an answer of one quarter. Okay, and it, it just takes a little bit of breaking things up into pieces and, and integrating fairly simple functions. It just takes a little time. I'll just leave that for, the, for you to do on your own if you want. But the idea now is we've got our two coefficients. Now let's, let's write down, so we have one half and one quarter. So again, our function f of x is equal to one minus x. And now f hat is equal to one half times the function one, that is phi zero, plus one quarter times the function phi one. Uh, remember that we can rewrite this again then is this is gonna be f hat of x is equal to, recall that this function is equal to 1 for x less than a half, less than or equal to a half, and it's negative 1 for x is greater than a half, right? Remember that? Okay, so what we can do is write this, we can add in this, and we're going to basically get 1 half plus 1 quarter for the first half of the interval, so that's going to be 3 quarters, and that's going to be for, um, x on that first half of the interval, right? And then for the latter half, we're going to take one half, we're going to minus a quarter. So we're going to get one quarter down there. And that's going to be from x from one half all the way up to one. All right, let's do a graph of this function here just to show what we're looking at here. Okay, so our, there's one up there. There's zero, there's one. Let's see if I can draw a good straight line here. There's my function one minus x. Now there is one half right there. There's three quarters and there is one quarter right there. Okay, so my approximation function is gonna look like that. And then right there is our one half point. I don't know how well I drew this, but Looks like I drew it okay. So right there, that is my f hat approximation. And it's basically a stair step uh, function that does the best job at, at approximating a diagonal line. Obviously, we're going to use stair steps. If, if, the, if the Haar wavelets here are used, okay? 
So obviously in the exercises of the book, you're going to be uh, adding uh, adding uh, phi 2 and phi 3 uh, to the approximation. Uh, um, and you'll do that in your homework. Um, but this shows you how it works. Notice, of course, that what's being minimized is this integral from 0 to 1 of f minus f hat quantity squared. So basically, you're, you're squaring the, the area between there, because that essentially is your error. All that right there is that error. All of that is error. Uh, and the idea is, can you find a function that makes those black areas as small as possible when you do this, the squared error integral dx, okay? So that's the idea behind it. So you can imagine experimenting with lots of different stair step functions and you'd find a sweet spot where you'd get the, the, the littlest error, the smallest error possible when you take the squared error of the, uh, 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 would come uh, when you get just that stair step that goes from three quarters down to one quarter. Um, that would be the best possible way to do this. All right, so that's our first example. Let's go on now to a second example. We're going to do now, um, we're going to approximate uh, a sine function, a sine function with the Legendre polynomials. Okay, so let's approximate. Uh, so let's require, remember what the Legendre polynomials, and we're going to look at uh, uh, we're going to look at just the Legendre polynomials. We're going to do the first four. Okay, so let's require. Let's remember what the Legendre polynomials are. Um, there's many ways to write the Legendre polynomials. The first one, of course, is psi, and it's equal to one. Okay. Oh, also our domain, of course, is going to be negative one to one. Okay. Uh, and uh, psi one is going to be equal to x, uh, and then. Uh, psi 2 is going to be equal to x squared minus 1 third, okay? And psi 3 is going to be equal to x cubed minus 3 fifths x. All right, so you may see other, if you look in Wikipedia or something, you might find other definitions of these. Um, that might be slightly different, but they all are going to follow the same pattern of basically ascending powers of x uh, as you go up. These are not the non-normalized version of the of the functions. All right, and our f f of x it's going to be sine pi times x, and that just gives us a nice graph right here, like that. So what this function is going to look like is there's the there's the first half of it there, and the back half is going to be a symmetric thing like that, all the way over at negative 1. Okay, so that is sine uh, pi x. All right, so we want to do the best approximation using these four. Again, the idea is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to save, again, the, the general formula is always the same, and you can program a computer to do this pretty straightforwardly. like that. Um, so you can use a computer or by hand. It'll take you a little bit by hand to do these. They're not too bad, uh, but let's just let's just spare ourselves some of the misery of going through the, uh, the somewhat tedious but fairly mundane calculations and just note that uh, C0 and C2 are both going to be zero.
And the reason for that is, it, I put a little explanation point, we say we need to explain why, is basically that sine, uh, uh, sine pi x is odd, and um, psi zero and psi two are even functions. So if you have a function that's an even function of x times an odd function of x, dx, and you're doing it over any symmetric interval like that, it's always going to be zero. Okay, so that is a great shortcut for computing a lot of these least squares problems that when you have odd functions over symmetric intervals. In this particular case, this is an interval that's symmetric about zero. It's negative one to one. Uh, so the next question then is, okay, what are C1? C1, I'll spare the details of the calculation. It's just going to be three over pi. And C2 is going to be um, 35 times pi squared minus 15 all over 2 pi cubed. Okay, you could simplify that if you want. You could compute what that is. I'll leave the details for you there. But it makes sense. If you, if you look at this function, sorry, that's C3. My bad. That, that should be C3 there. Okay, so what we're looking at here, though, is essentially, when you put these together, you're looking at basically a cubic function. And you know cubic functions typically have this behavior. They oftentimes do have a shape that looks like that. Like that. This is a cubic function. That's a very classic look for a cubic function. It's no surprise, then, that these cubic functions would approximate a function that looks like sine, like that. And in fact, the approximation is very good if you plot these two things together. So if you plot, uh, so our f hat in this particular case is 3 over pi times x plus uh, 35 times pi squared minus 15 all over 2 pi cubed times, and now we have to put in our cubic function here, our, our psi 3 is going to be x cubed minus three-fifths three x. Okay, you could simplify if you want. But I think we could leave it that way, it's just fine. The idea here is this is, this is actually very good. Uh, if you were to look at a graph of it, and I don't have one up right this moment, um, it, it would be, you can see slight differences in the graph. Uh, but essentially it looks like this. It, it, it goes a little under here, and then it goes a little over there. And here it goes a little bit above, and it goes like that. So that right there is our f hat. That's about how it looks um, if you make a graph of it. And th it is, in, in fact, a very good approximation. So I hope you enjoyed this and see how simple and straightforward this really powerful theory of or using uh, uh, using the, doing the least squares function approximation uh, through this process of what we call orthogonal projection is for computing function approximations. And you could use it for all sorts of, uh, of, of basis functions, whether it's Haar wavelets or Legendre polynomials, or and there's many, of many other orthogonal function sets out there you can choose to use. Thank you very much.